Get ready to be mesmerized. Get ready to be entertained. Get ready to be informed. And most of all, get ready to listen. The latest sports news, great interviews, and the best coverage from around the nation's capital. It's Listen In with KNN, the sports sound of the district, right now on AM 1340 and 96.9 FM, Fox Sports Radio. Here's your host, Kelsey Nicole Nelson. It's a special edition of Listen In with KNN on Fox Sports Radio, 96.9 FM and 1340 AM with America's favorite dad. Yes, this is the edition of Listen In with KNN that you've all been waiting for with special guest LeVar Ball. So let's not waste a moment and get straight into the show. And with that, it means it's time to sit back, relax, and get ready to listen in and follow along with the conversation using hashtag Listen In with KNN. Now, for all my loyal listeners who listen to this show each and every week, you'll have to wait for my Kelsey's Do Good Award next show because we're now going to take you to a quick commercial break, and we will be right back with our very special guest because today we're just going to get straight into it and get you guys the answers and questions that you've all been waiting for. Jerry's Burger Spot has all your Friday night tailgating favorites. From their never-frozen burger, fresh-cut fries, ice cream, and milkshakes, Jerry's Burger Spot offers the best lunch, and if you desire a fresh handmade burger or some delicious ice cream like Mom used to make, stop by Jerry's Burger Spot at 3815 Jefferson Park Road, Prince George, Virginia, right off 36 near Fort Lee. Jerry's Burger Spot. Remember when. Back to Listen In with K&N, the sports sound of the district and beyond. It's now that time to welcome in today's special guest, the CEO of Big Baller Brand, Mr. LeVar Ball, to the show. LeVar, how are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you for having me. It is a pleasure. (laughs) It's always a good time when I get to have you on, and especially since you're overseas. I especially thank you for taking the time out to be on the show. Uh, No problem. All right, LeVar, so for people that don't know you, even though I don't know how they could, and I briefly want to run down through a short bio, if you don't mind. That's fine. All right, let's go. Yeah, let's go. (laughs) I created the Big Baller brand for my boys. I'm the CEO of that. Uh, I've been a trainer for a long time, played a little Mm -hmm. professional sport, uh, married with three kids, and now we're on this great adventure of making this Big Baller brand empire grow and grow and grow. I love it. Short, sweet, to the point, and all the energy that you bring yes. behind it. <laughs> oh, that's how <laughs> and I, we need that, honestly. There's so much going on in the world. I think people like you just help give us, you know, there's always a good day, and there's nothing to not be happy about, obviously, from your energy. Exactly. And, then, <laughs> and for those that don't know Long further not, about you. As long as you're not six feet deep, you should be fine. Hey, there Long you go. You I, the I live day, the same way. You should be great. Yeah. <laughs> we got the same vibe right here. That's why we got so much energy flowing. Exactly. It's great. (laughs) It's wonderful. And, LeVar, you're a native of South Los Angeles, which I know is a place you are very proud of. And you played college basketball back out at West Los Angeles College before you transferred to Washington State for the 1987 to 88 season. You then transferred to D2 Cal State Los Angeles, where you met your wife that you mentioned, Miss Tina, who was a six foot O player on the women's basketball team and then on the women's team. And then this is where the story begins. As you said, you have three sons who we all know very well, of course, Los Angeles Lakers star Lonzo Ball, and then Lithuanian stars, Leangelo and Lamelo Ball. So of course, Lavar, I know you have a lot going on over there in London, and that's what I want to talk to you. First about, we have the B.C. Vitautis facing the acclaimed BBL team, the London Lions, on April 2nd inside the high-profile Copper Box Arena in London, United Kingdom. So first of all, Lavar, can you tell me how did this great opportunity arise to see this must-see European basketball showdown between the Lions and Lithuania? Wow. Okay, we did a pop-up shop in London a few weeks ago, and then we went to a basketball game, which was with the London uh, Lions. But the atmosphere and the chemistry up in there was so good. I said, man, we do a big baller challenge game here with my boys. It ought to bring so much excitement to London. This is the perfect time to do it. But it's going to introduce the big baller brand of basketball to London. So now you get a bigger crowd to come in and say, you know what, let me see what these ball boys are about. Right. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a, It's just entertainment. We're going to have a lot of fun, and it's going to be good for both sides, for us entertaining and also to introduce basketball to London. 
Right, and you talked about why you want to bring it to London, but what makes London so special of a place for the Big Baller brand? Hey, what makes London special is over here in Europe. Like I said, we're not local, we're global. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they got beautiful people over here, very, very polite. I, I like their little accents and stuff like that. And it's just a win-win situation. The more we can grow and play in different uh, countries, the better it is. Right. And then, of course, with your sons playing on the Lithuanian team, London actually has the largest Lithuanian population outside of, Lithu- outside of Lithuania. So how do you think your sons and the team will overall feed off this energy for the upcoming game? Then we're going to feed off this energy where we're going to win. Mm-hmm. We're going to win. On a it's a sure win. Play so fast. It's a sure win. I'm going to tell you that before we even do it. <laughs> I got two ball boys on the same team running loose. What you going to do? Nothing. Mm-hmm. But sit back. And watch this tail whooping. That's what I say, tail whooping. I didn't say you get wild <laughs> on the radio. I call it a tail whooping. Because we're coming down to do some damage. That's why it's called a clash. Who ever heard of a clash and you don't run into somebody and beat them down bad? <laughs> Obviously the right name for this clash coming up. And, LeVar, I mean, you talked about how you are sure it's going to be a win, but right now the team, I know, they're coming off a tough defeat, 82-79. to And after the game, I mean, you expressed disappointment and some disagreement with the head coach. So specifically in this next game, as the team has a record right now, 5-21, and I mean, how have your sons been preparing for this next matchup? We're preparing for this next matchup by just doing a lot of running, getting up a lot of shots. Because mm-hmm. guess what? Your man, big baller you hauler is going to be the head coach for this game. So that's ah. our guaranteed win. Yes, there's a twist. The big baller is loose. Oh, you my know God. Not, Coach. It's a whole it's... new, different atmosphere. We're going to be running and gunning and having a good time. <laughs> so, specifically, that's exciting that you will be at the helm coaching this game. So, specifically, you kind of talked about right now how there's going to be a fast pace of this game. What else can we look forward to and expect from you as head coach during this game with your team? As head coach, you're going to expect some excitement, some entertainment. Yeah, I'm just going to have a good time. I love to coach, and I love to have, And, you know, the way I coach my ba- my boys, they just unleash so it ain't no holes barred. They're not like the, the other coach try to do these little weird things with them and take them in and out of the game and tell them don't shoot and all this other stuff. I just let them play free and play hard, and it's a better, it's a better vibe for the team to not just have all this negativity. Right. We just want to have positive things like good rebound. Now, I ain't going to throw my hands up when they miss a shot and do all this. We're going to have a good time. We're going to go down to London, and people are going to say, wow, regardless of the win or the loss, they're going to say those boys play hard and fast, and it's just a good overall game to watch. Mm. All right. See, I'm already excited about it. I might have to get a ticket and come out there. <laughs> because come, I... come get a ticket. Even if you don't get a ticket, I got you. Come sit by me, and you'll see how we go there. I'm going to have to take you up on that. And real quick, since we're talking about tickets, how can people get tickets for this game? Oh, you can go online and get it. I think BigBallerBrand.com. That should be good. And also from Ticketmaster. Okay. And is there a way people can watch online as well? Uh, There'll be a way you can watch online as well. But I forgot that information. But uh, go to our uh, Instagram and you'll find all that out. All right. Perfect, perfect. And now Instagram, yes. Big Baller Brand on Instagram. Make sure you all check that out. To watch online if you're over here in the United States and can't make the trip over. But now I want to get back to the team, LeVar. And, of course, uh, BC Vitatis, I mean, you guys boost a highly talented roster. Of course, we have your sons, LaMelo Ball and LiAngelo Ball. But then also you guys have Thomas Dimsa, and then you have Zakalkis. I mean, who can forget those big names? But with that, all those big stars, obviously, and really the great stars that have come from Lithuania basketball, How have your sons adapted to life in Lithuania overall? And, I mean, how has Lithuania really embraced your family's arrival? Well, they embraced my family's arrival on the fact that we bring a lot of eyes to the team now. Mm -hmm. On the fact that my boys come over here, it's a a situation that's never been done before, which is two Americans come over here at such a young age and be brothers at that, but be Mm -hmm. highly skilled and to come over here with a brand already. So it's not like they're just coming over here to try to make some money. They love the game of basketball, and they play it for a passion. So there's a difference. Everybody else who comes over here, you come over here to make a living. My boys are just coming over here to get better and enjoy the game of basketball and just show the people that how they play is just entertainment. It's not a big deal. So the way we treat it like that, 
which allows people to see the true essence of my boys loving the game of basketball and not coming saying, you know what, I'm trying to make as much money as I can before I get out of here. There's a difference. Right, a huge difference. And with that being said, I mean, how overall, I mean, you just being a dad, how do you think they have overall adapted to just everyday life in Lithuania? My boys can adapt to anything because they're so good. They're like their daddy. We adapt to anything. But Mm -hmm. there's not much of a – that we have to adapt to if you love basketball. So if you eat, sleep, and play basketball, that's what we're doing over here. We go to restaurants, eat, eat the food that we like, which is pizza and hamburgers and chicken wings. And then we get to take nice, beautiful naps. We get to look out and see all the white snow all over the place, go in the gym, and hoop. And right. guess what? Do the same thing the next day. So it's not adapting. It's just enjoying the people, enjoying different cultures, and not looking at it at, from a negative perspective and saying, oh, it's so cold. Oh, it looks like the country. Oh, you don't worry about all that. The fact that you get to play basketball inside a gym is lovely enough for us. And, right. you know, to say good morning to people, it's, it's beautiful. But if you look at it in a different situation as far as the negativity, like there are no clubs, no cars, no street lights, and all this stuff, who cares about all that when you can go in a gym and just instead of people going to the movies and having nothing to do, Come watch the ball boys play a game inside a nice, warm venue. Right, right. And so overall, I mean, how how do you think this experience will impact your son's future in basketball? It's going to make them better on the fact they're going to get better no matter where they're at because they're hard workers. Now, you can be in the best place or the worst place. If you're not a hard worker, guess what? It's not going to work. Right. So guess what? When you come over here and work hard, good things are going to happen regardless if you're playing or not. You have to work hard within yourself. And that's what my boys are doing. They're getting better each day, uh, playing against grown men as, as far as playing against high schoolers or guys in college. These guys are making a living. So they're more, they should be more determined on what they're doing as opposed to, oh, it's March Madness, I have one game, and whatever happens, happens. They're playing over here for their livelihood, to get a check to take care of their families. So the intensity should be a little more, which is good for the boys. Right. You know, right. when you're playing against grown men and you're a teenager, everybody could be a man. Just because you're 30 years old don't mean you're a man. You could be a, still a boy making stupid decisions. Or you can be a youngster making grown man decisions. Mm. So Very either way, right. it's just a state of mind. It's right. a state of mind. It's not an age on being a grown man. Right. And obviously, I mean, you feel they have that state of mind, which is why you feel that they're excelling where they are. And I think that's why they've been so fun to watch over in Lithuania. And I mean, just staying with Lithuanian yeah. basketball basketball i mean there's so many great players right that have come before your sons and now your sons are getting you know into that legacy so overall i mean what ultimately drew you to lithuania and really what do you think that their impact will be with the tradition of lithuanian basketball well lithuania we we, we're going to bring a little more excitement on the fact that we play a different style they've Mm -hmm. been playing a european style all their life but here's the thing they are passionate about basketball and when there's something is changing or you see something different, you either go and stick your nose up to it and say, oh, this is raggy, or you're going to embrace it and be like, wow, I've never known it could be played like this before. And for my boys to be at such a young age doing this, that's what's amazing to these people. Like, man, how can they play like that and be so young? But it's just like this. We, we have that passion for playing the game. And in Lithuania, we kind of bring more light to people just – not just saying, oh, where's Lithuania at now? Now that the ball boys are here and the things that we're doing over here, it's very positive for the country itself. Mm-hmm. Right, so and it's going to make a very good huge situation. impact. Yes. It's going to have a great impact. And, and hopefully maybe some other folks is in the U.S. and say, you know what? My boys are going to be in the same situation. They're young. Can we get over to Lithuania? And next day you've got an overflow of people from the U.S. trying to get over here to Europe to play some ball. Right. And if anything, you've been a trailblazer in that asset because now people see, you know what, if he can do it, possibly I can do it, right? And maybe it'll be exactly. those people like you that want to take charge yep. of their own That's kids' That's all I want to do. I just want to open people's mind to that. That's all. If mm-hmm. one or two it's... people come, we then did our job. Right. But to come over here and, and hold a family uh, in a good situation as far as just not getting in trouble, acting wild, uh, getting pulled over and anything, the, the the family is just good. It's a family values too. So what happens is people see that. I'm not just over here on the solo scene like, hey, man, it's just me, it's just me, it's just me, or my boys over here thinking they're just one superstar 
that's supposed to run the, the world with seven bodyguards and all this stuff. Nah, we got cameras around us and all that, but we still act the same. We still sign autographs. We, we hang out with people. We talk just like normal human beings. Right. But we don't right. hold ourselves to such a high standard where we just walking around like we the shiznit. That's mm-hmm. not cussing, shiznit. <laughs> See, I like how you said so that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so it's good. But we don't walk around like that, man. It's good that the kids can come up to us, the old folks, and people – trying to just speak English for us. And we're trying to learn a little Lithuanian. So it's, right. it's a fun deal. All right. I didn't know you were learning Lithuanian. Can you say anything in Lithuanian language? Yes, I can say good morning, labarritas. I can say good ah. night. <laughs> with labas vakaras. I can say a lot of stuff. I can say I like that, man, patinka. <laughs> Very good. Honestly, you sound my native. Famous, my, my famous word is puiku. Peak puiku is fantastic. If I like some food or they did something good, I tell them, Puiku. <laughs> you honestly sound that? like That's a native. Awesome. I can't even tell that. I mean, you sound great yeah. saying it. Thank you. I chew, I chew. <laughs> That's thank you in Lithuanian. I chew. Well, thank you. See, I'm not even going to try because I'm going to sound crazy saying it. I have my East Coast accent. No, you sound good. All you have to do is say, I chew. And when you say, I, I chew, that means thank you. And you know how right. you I say you're welcome? Bless you. <laughs> That's true. All right. I chew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I chew, and then I'm going to say fresh you, which is right. you know, no, that's you, perfect. Got a, you got an interview with the big baller and a learning session in Lithuania, all for the you, price of nothing. You can't beat that. Obviously, you can't beat that. And you that's why I was so excited to have you on, LeVar, because I knew it was hey, coming. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and now I want to go back to big baller brand. So obviously, I mean, you guys are the main corporate sponsor of Vitatis. Uh, team and obviously yeah. your brand now I think is world revered around the world. But I want to hear specifically from yeah. you. I mean, what are your primary objectives with growth in Europe and the rest of the world? I mean, what's next for the Big Baller brand? What's next for the Big Baller brand? Uh, we got a lot of things in the works right now. But like I said, the main goal is to make this empire so big that when I first came out with the triple B's, everybody laughing like this is supposed to be a joke. And just like my son's not finding no shoe deals and all that, I'm going to make Adidas, Nike, Under Armour, all of them going to look back and say, we should have gave that man a billion dollars and let him go on his way. I'm going to make this so big now they're going to look back and it's going to be a picture of me saying, how did all this get started? Because we finna do some damage. And like I said, the things we got going on now, like I said, we co-branding with, some, with, with water over here. The best water in the world is in Lithuania. It has zero nitrate. That means it's not polluted at all. Right. It's natural. Right. Yeah. You can't beat that. Now, what basketball players have a water deal? Nobody. Right. But the big baller brand. Mm. And guess what else? We coming what out else? with rims and tires. Oh, my gosh. We're so we're going to the big baller brand tires. everywhere, literally. Yeah. I'm telling you, every situation that comes upon us and is good, we're going to make do of it. And like mm-hmm. I said, they're going to look back, and this is going to be – a billion dollar enterprise, and they're gonna be like, man, Levar said it was worth three billion, and they're gonna look back, and it's gonna be worth them three Bs, billion, billion, and billion. Wow. So obviously, it's the ball way. It seems like. I mean, you have these. I mean, you speak things into fruition, which I love. You say it's gonna happen, and then we see it happen. And I think everybody has to give you credit for that, even those who might not always agree with you. But when you say things, they usually happen. Hey, and obviously, I mean, exactly. that's what we can look forward to. <laughs> right. But that's why. They don't even have to give me credit for it because it's going to happen whether they like it or not. Right. right. That's the thing. If you're determined to do something, go ahead and do it. Don't let nobody stop you. Sometimes it gets a little hard and people say, man, I'm not going to go no more. That's where the big baller brand comes in and say, are you built for this? Right. Because sometimes you got to put in a lot of work. Now, I knew my boys were going to be this good on the fact that I put so much time in them as they were babies. Mm-hmm. Now it's been 20 years, and everybody think they just got good all of a sudden. Like, no, nah, they put a lot of work in, and they do, they do a lot of things. Uh, right. People look at me as just Lonzo and Jello and Mello's dad, not knowing I'm, I'm a CEO and a history changer. We're the first people ever to come into right. the NBA with our own brand. Mm-hmm. That's a history. That's, cha- that's, that's a history. I'm history. Right. So whether we right. do good or bad or nothing, they're going to remember the guy who came into the NBA with his sons, three of them, and get them all on the same team. Mm. Wow. You know what? If they don't put them all on the same team, I might go crazy and buy my own team and come back and scoop all three of them up. Ooh, wouldn't that be something? 
So I'm just telling you, that's that's what potential I have. Right, right, to do it. And that's why I say, I mean, you speak things into fruition, and you really look out for the well-being of your sons. You are there for them the yes. entire time of the process. And I think it's great, honestly, that they have a leader like you in that, because we all know how crazy the sports business can get, right, with agents and everybody else in your ear telling you things. But you took a different step in approach, and now I really think parents are looking at you and seeing, you know, what is truly truly best for their kids and I love how you said you know people look at you sometimes as just their dad right the ball brothers dad but I mean how do right. you most want to be remembered for all these different things that you're doing um you know what I don't care if I'm remembered or not all I got to make sure is I'm good to my family mm-hmm. that's the main thing and everything else will take care of itself they either go some guys gonna remember me for being great and somebody's gonna be remember me for being an a-hole because mm-hmm. you can't please everybody Right. But as long as I'm true to my family and they're true to me, man. I have to give you a compliment, though. They, I've had interviewed with all these dumbass ESPN writers and reporters and all that. You are one of the most intelligent people I've been interviewed with. Just oh, knowing the history you. of my family and being reasonable on the way I'm thinking, it's very easy to talk to you. I'm trying thank to figure you. if they want to hire somebody, they better find out who you are and come get you, and things will go a lot better <laughs> for them. Well, thank you. I truly appreciate that, honestly. I mean, I just try to talk to people like everyday people. And like I said, I think you're doing something different, and you need to be given credit for it. But I think we both know sometimes people are afraid of change. And I think that's honestly why you've gotten the response that you've gotten, right? Because a lot of people just get used to the status quo. But then here you come, and you change things up, and you shake things up. And it does make people uncomfortable, but that's why I do applaud you, because you were not afraid. And obviously, you're still here going. Most people would be afraid to even go to Lithuania in the first place. But yet, you know, you took that chance yourself sons took that chance, and obviously they do believe in you. And just, you know, staying with that, I'm just curious, too. I mean, how do you want your sons to be remembered in Lithuania once their playing careers there are over and finished? And hey, I don't, I don't – here's the thing. They're going to be remembered as being great entertainers. Mm-hmm. And the young boys who started this thing where Americans are starting to come over to Europe and, and do the same thing that you guys have been doing over here all these years is – making these kids pros at 14 and 15 years old, Ricky Rubio, uh, Mano Ginobili, them starting their career so early in the pro ranks, whereas in the U.S., everybody's taught to go high school, uh, get a scholarship to go to the college, let them exploit you for a little bit, and then make it to the pros. Mm -hmm. Now, we're the first ones as Americans just doing it the other way, the way you guys do it on this side, which is, hey, become pros at an early age if that's what you want to do and get paid for it and just work on your craft. If you're not trying to be a rocket scientist or a chemist or a lawyer, why do we got to go to school and read all these books for what? And that's not even going in your, to your profession. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying not not don't throw education out the window, but you can get educated on your own. You can right. go read a book or let somebody take interest in what you want to do right. and, and, and go from there. And it's just like I go back to these, these, uh, these, these sports cancers who do all this talking, and it's like, you guys are talking so much and talking about what I'm doing with kids and AAU programs and all this stuff. I don't see not one sportscaster say, you know what, let's get 10 kids and put them under my internship. Mm-hmm. I'm talking like Stephen A. Smith, uh, Shannon Sharp, anybody that's already right. in communication. Who are you helping get in communication? Mm-hmm. You're not helping nobody do nothing. You're just talking a bunch of gibberish. Right. And I'm like, they're not helping no kids. I'm like, there are some kids who don't want to be athletes who want to be sportscasters. What right. kind of program do you have where you guys can offer them money or internship or anything to make them succeed and pull somebody along the way that you've already got a chance to be a reporter? Everybody gets a chance, and you've got to make the best of it when that opportunity comes. Now, everybody right. ain't going. You can't have everybody in the world be sportscasters and all that. But mm-hmm. maybe you help five or six kids do that. Right. That's a good thing. But I don't see none of these guys helping nobody do anything but want to talk about something. Mm. Just like talk about raising kids and talk about kids and you don't have kids or you have three sets of kids from three different women or right. you have sets of kids you don't even deal with. Mm. And that's why I come back to the, the Charles Barkleys and the, and the Scotty Pippins and the guys who talk about me leading my kids down the wrong road, but yet they have kids out of wedlock or whatever, that they don't even deal with. So how are you going to be a good father and you're not dealing with kids that you had from some previous marriage or some other women? Mm-hmm. Right. But they so want to critique me on what I'm doing my boy. That's what I'm saying. 
Leave me alone and go handle yours. Right. Right. I mean, because obviously you feel like you're doing the, I mean, you're raising your kids, right? And that's what everybody who has kids oh. simply wants to do. And you do it in the public eye, right, right? because of how, how 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 high profile your sons are. But at the end of the day, I mean, your sons agree with it, your family agrees with it. And I get what you're saying. You're saying, you know, why is everybody judging you? Why is everybody taking the right. time to judge you? And you rather help have people taking time out, as you said, to help other people bring somebody else up along the way. Right, I feel right. like that's kind of been what you want with Big Baller right. Brand, right? Like, how how has Big Baller Brand Man, specifically they you know, have been in the community? They should have interviewed me a long time ago. <laughs> well, then I have to have you back you on right the bar. Point, and, I, and you you get what I'm saying, you know. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it's good to talk to somebody that has the their head on their shoulders the right way, and 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 be the way you are, where you're not trying to twist words and get something else out of this. You right. just genuinely want to understand what's going on with this. And I can talk to anybody like this all day. Right. Right. Well, that and makes me like, so happy, through, LeVar. I've been through a lot of interviews, and I've been talking to a lot of people, and mm-hmm. I recognize the ones that are real. Well, thank you. Like I said, that means, that means a lot to me. This show is something I started as a brainchild. I was so excited to have you on. And I'm going to have to have you back, LeVar. I hope you don't mind that. Cause you Definitely. Are yes. Anytime. Great. You I want to come great. back to the other people until they do me wrong. If you, I bring everybody in the same way. Good. Mm-hmm. And it's up to right. you to turn me bad or, or for me, like like I tell all the writers and everybody, I say write whatever you want, say whatever you want. You just got to suffer the consequences, whether they be good or bad. Right. Now, if you want to write some negative stuff about me and thinking you're going to get all this promotion and people looking at you, it's only going to happen one time. Then I say, I'm done with you. Now what? Mm-hmm. As opposed to you're going to have to talk to me on the fact that the brand is growing. My right. boys are up and coming. So you mm-hmm. have to talk to some of you. You're going to have to talk to Lonzo, Jello, or Mello. You're going right. to have to talk to me, not on the fact that I'm their father, but on the fact that the big ball of brand is growing. Right. So you're going to have to see me somewhere with the, with the things that I'm doing as far as the different businesses I'm opening up. Like I said, I'm going to start a league called the JBA. Mm-hmm. That's something strong, that a right. man comes in here and creates a league. Right. But now, see, everybody looking at the NCAA and finding out all this shady stuff that was going on, mm-hmm. and now I create my league, and now they say, oh, maybe they do need to be paid, or maybe, oh, yes, I'm doing it already. Watch how this thing launches in the summer. It's mm. going to be amazing because right. it's going to be something new. Right. Like I right. said, they can't stop it. They want to. But like the JBA is going to be a strong move on the fact yeah. that it's going to be game-changing and it's going to be history-changing. It's not mm-hmm. just me talking. When I said this back in December, folks were like, well, how are we going to get all the players, the top 100 players, guess what? I don't even want them. I don't want mm-hmm. the top 100 players in the nation because they already got their hand in the cookie jar, and it's al- they already tainted. Right. I They've already been recruited. Who've already been recruited, already been taking money, and already slid up under the, under the table uh, which colleges you're going to and how much money and which agents you're going to talk to. So there's no fun in just playing the game because they owe too many people. Right. So what my league is, I'm going to have some fresh guys come in there with some talent who didn't take the money, who didn't play the political game, but it's just going to get to the next level on their talent alone and their hard work, not on this prefab stuff saying, hey, go to this camp, we'll give you $10,000. Go to this school, we'll give you another five. Go to this school and you come out early, we give you 50000 then you pay us back when you make it to the league. Right. I'm not trying to do all that. I want the guys to work hard and understand how to save their money and be intelligent and go for what they want to do, which is be pro basketball players. If that doesn't work, guess what? Right. The businesses that I have, and if you've got good character and it doesn't work out, I will be able to place you somewhere, right. whether it be working for me in a hotel or working for my AAU squad or doing something positive that you right. like to do, maybe in marketing or something, maybe working a big baller brand that you like clothing or retail. I mean, there's something where I can put you if you have good character and you don't happen to turn out to be a pro. Right, 
Right. I think that's huge, obviously, because we all know after basketball, there is life after basketball. And as you said, I mean, not everybody's going to be able to get to the next level. In your league, I like that you made that aspect because I don't think we hear that enough. I mean, what will happen to these players who maybe aren't able to get to that next level? You say you want to help them with every day, get their, get them a job. And that's what it comes down to, right, right. so they can have their livelihood. And I think that's going to be that's something that makes your league stand out. And, I mean, what else would you tell people about this league? Do you have any more updates? Or what would you tell people? That, how will this league stand out, you know, from other? Leagues that we this league is, to this do is going to stand out. It's going to stand out because it's the first of its kind, and it's going to allow uh, kids to get paid. You know, make some money. Where right. in college you're not. They just say, "Are oh, you our guy? You're going to sold a bunch of jerseys and sold out the arena, but we're not giving you anything. But I'm going to allow you to go pro." Right. Right. Wow, you didn't get all this, and now, like they say. You can always come back to school. With my thing, people is like, well, when you finish with LeVar, what, is, what about school? Hey, if you want to go back to school after you finish playing in my league, for, I'm going to let you play in my league from 18 to 21. After that, after 21, you got to roll because I don't want okay. people trying to make a living down there. And like right. I said, the, the type of guys that we're getting, they're, they're top guys where they have a chance to make it to the league. So we're going to be doing the traveling. We're going to have the same rules as the pros from the three-point line, the 48 minutes in the clock, uh, 24-second shot, everything like the pros. So it's better than college. But it's also this. Let's say you do good in my league, and a guy comes up to you and says, you know what, I'm uh, uh, my brand is Nabisco or some crackers, and I want you to endorse these crackers. Now you can come straight up to these guys if you think they're that guy that can promote your good. Right. Without right. being shady about it. So if you have a certain charisma about you, and they, now they can approach you. Right. They can approach you now. They don't have to say, okay, we can't do it in NCAA. You can get you an agent and be like, hey, with the ties that I have now, perhaps I tell some teams, hey, I got a guy in the JBA who might want to come overseas. So right. it gives them at least another opportunity, another window to do something else if everybody doesn't make the NBA. Mm-hmm. But also I was going to tell the kids, too, the key to life is not making all the money in the world. Mm-hmm. I think the key to life is having a passion for something, and if you right. happen to get paid for it, you're good. It's a bonus, it's just right? Like you. You can talk, you can, you, if you're in the broadcast and you love talking to people, you can right. do it all okay. You're not, you're not looking and saying, well, it's overtime. I can make some more money. And it's just right. like I love doing it, and you don't count the hours. Some people yes. are going through life counting hours. I'm not one of them. So I'm right. having a great time doing whatever I do, and people don't understand that. And it's like this, like I always tell everybody, let's say you done bought everything you wanted. You wanted all this money and you done bought everything. Now what's left after that? Mm -hmm. You only can go shopping so many times where you say, man, I'm tired of shopping. Now you got some other vices. So you better have a passion for doing something. So if you're stacking your money or whatever, you still get to do something that you love. That's why I always tell people about my boys adapting. They don't have to adapt on the fact that we over here with family. They're doing something that they love to do, which is play basketball and entertain people. Mm-hmm. And, and what's wrong with that? I mean, there's no no bad in that. Just like right. sometimes when Lonzo plays and he doesn't score but two points and this and that, and they say, oh, Lonzo's struggling. And I'm like, my son never struggles on the mm-hmm. fact that how can you be so young, a millionaire, getting a, instead of going to work, you get to go to a gym and play in front of thousands of people, win or lose. You get to go to practice. You get to shoot the ball because this is going to end 15, 20 years. It's over. Right. And you got the rest of your life. So enjoy it right now with all this passion that you get to play the game. How can you struggle when you're a millionaire playing something that you love to play? That's right. not a struggle. The fact that you get to go out there and walk on the court is the most beautiful thing in the world because there could be a time when you can't go on that court. Mm-hmm. So enjoy every time you can step on there. And when you look at it like that, 20 years is a long time, but it's really a short time, especially if you get to live to be 80. Right, right. And I liked how you said all that. And honestly, your your positive outlook, LeVar, on life, it's so good to hear. It's so good to hear. And obviously, we can see it in your sons. Right. But everybody wants to say the thing, oh, he's not his own man. He's going against his dad. Why would he go against me if I've been doing nothing but leading him forward? It's like Mm -hmm. people say, LeVar, you push your kids to go be the best. I don't push my kids to do nothing on the fact right. that that's resistance. I right. lead them. So if I'm leading you and I say, hey, follow me this way, you can turn off if you're behind me anytime you feel like it. Mm-hmm. If you don't think things are going right, don't keep going straight with me. Make a left or a right. 
and right. go do your own thing. And it's okay with that. And that's why they expect me to be like, oh, you, you need to let him be yourself. And the dad just needs to back away. Why would I back away from my family? I don't go to the back. I help them do a lot of things. And it's like when you're being young, uh, you don't know nothing. You're 19, 20 years old. Do you think Lonzo knows anything about a tax bracket? Mm-hmm. You know right. you're making some money, but you don't know where your money goes. You don't know you're right. in a 40 percentile at the top now, and they take 50% of your check. So now when right. you're looking at it, you look, everybody's looking in the paper and saying, wow, Lonzo's making 30-something million dollars in four years. They're not telling you you're only getting 15 of that if you're lucky. Right. So hopefully you don't go buy something that costs you $14 million thinking you got all this money talking about, oh, I got another 15 to spend. No, you got to know about everything. So it's, it's just like certain things have to be done. House notes need to be paid. Uh, water bills need to be paid. If you come in a teenager and all of a sudden you get to the NBA and you ain't never paid a bill because your mom and dad, somebody's got to show you how to do it. But it's very right. easy for them to get caught up with these guys that's shysty saying, hey, whatever you want, I'll get it. You want a car, I'll go get it. Now they charge you 10 times what the car is worth, and then they give you some bill talking about, well, now we'll give you a little discount. We'll let you buy the car for 100000 It's usually 150 That's what they tell you. And then you right. find out the car is only 80000 brand new. But you mm. never ask. It's just like right. you let everybody do so many things for you, you don't, you don't pay attention, attention to it. It's just like right. the only write-offs you're going to get is kids and property. Right. Well, let's right. hold off on the kids and go buy a lot of property. Mm-hmm. But see, nobody tells you these type of things. It's just like uh, just like the endorsement deals. Right. Guys don't get it. Some guys be so happy to get free product, they happy as hell mm-hmm. for Nike to say, you know what, whatever you want from us is free. It's just like that's how they get these guys, even, even the superstars. You done made them enough money, but yet they give you a $200 million contract. Or ten right. years, so you're making twenty mil a year, but yet they have made already made a couple of billion dollars off of you the first year, right? For their for their Adidas products, so they can they got time to find the next guy all the time, and that's what I want to make people understand is their self worth. Okay. A shoe is just a shoe; it's stitching right. and glue. It ain't got no mechanical parts to it. What happens is people buy things for the story, the story behind whatever you buy. There's a story behind it. Nobody's going to buy a bunch of Jordans if he's not the best player in the world. Right, right. Nobody's going to buy anything. Yes, so you have to have a story. Now, the story that we have is family-owned, independent, and the boys are good on the Mm come-up. So people don't have to tell me, like, all three of my boys have signature shoes. Right. What does that say about Nike and Adidas if they tell you you have to be in a league for 10 years before you get your signature shoe and only the selected few get their signature shoe? Mm-hmm. And yet I have Jello with his own shoe and Mello with his own shoe. Mello had his in high school. That's just to let you know. You guys have enough money to make your own damn shoe. Quit relying on people and go do your own thing. Right, right. And I think that's oh, a huge message for people, you know, because so many people do right. wait sometimes for others to be like you, the trailblazer. Then when it gets popular, then other people will join the bandwagon, right? But you're saying they're going to join the that. bandwagon after they see this grow like it is. They're going to say, you know what, I'm betting on myself. Let, mm-hmm. Let's say this. You create a shoe, and you're in Mississippi, and you right. don't sell your shoe at all worldwide. But at least the people in Mississippi will buy your shoe. They'll bag you because you're from there. Right. So how about you get all the money that's coming to you for that on the people supporting you because you're one of them? Right. That's what you can do. It doesn't take all that to make it, but they try to wait till, uh, so they, they get the kid when they're young, endorsement, give them a little money. If they turn out to be all-stars, now they say, oh, we got this guy. We can really make the shoe now. It's like it's only, how many people got signature shoes? And here, I'll tell you who they are. It's, it's Jordan, I mean, okay, we're not going to forget about him. But let's say <laughs> LeBron, Kyrie, right. KD, James Harden. These are the people you know now. Hold on, mm-hmm. I'm almost done. Who else? Uh, well, I don't know too much about Paul George. He just got his. Kyrie just got his. Hold on. And uh, Lonzo Ball has his. Right. And Steph Curry has his. And, oh, LeAngelo Ball has his. And, oh, the middle one, LaMelo. He, oh, he has a signature shoe. He's 16. He has a signature shoe. Right. Okay, and that's it. That's right. it. See, that's it's an elite, it's a select group. 
Yes. And how do we jump to the front of the line already? Because we have our own brand and our own signature shoes, all three of our boys. Mm-hmm. So just showing you how easy it is if people believe in you or you set a good product that people want to buy it just because of you. Now, if my right. boys was gangbangers or acting wild or in trouble every other week, getting drunk, smoking weed, you don't hear nothing bad about my boys doing things like that. Mm-hmm. Just like they try to talk about Jello, and I was saying it's not a big deal. I said right. it's not a big deal because Jello made a bad mistake. And all the good stuff he done done all his life and one bad mistake, and they want to hang him down. I already knew he was going to be cool on his character. And I'm saying it's not a big deal because me being raised in L.A. South Central, right. I've had a lot of friends die and go to jail for life and, and, and just – I'm talking about 15, 16 year old kids retaliating and gang banging or talking crazy in a fight and get shot or try to stick up a goddamn store with a gun and get hurt. Right. My son, like I said, it's not a big deal on the fact that he confessed about trying to steal some damn shades and end up giving them back and confessing. He ain't no monster killer. Mm-hmm. He didn't twist nobody's arm. He didn't cuss. He didn't do nothing. Just try to be slick, one false move. And people were like, well, he's going to learn from this. He ain't going to learn nothing from this because he already learned before he did it. What I hope to happen is people understand, youngsters, that you can go from point 100 at the top to zero real quick on one stupid move. Right. That's what I want people to understand. Think about what you're doing before you do it. Just be responsible. And therefore, it's like I said, y'all are not going to – jail for no 10 years or nothing because his character is too good. But right. if he was uh, acting crazy and out there and, and then you look back at his background and he you know, stole a car and he didn't make the class and he get all F, now you've got a different thing to worry about. Mm-hmm. So all I want people to do, like I said, the fact that his name is Ball, it made a huge thing. Right. And he tried to make it bigger than what it was and that's what I was saying. It's like right. I said, it wasn't even a case. If he got to talk to the people he took the classes from, they would look him in the eyes and say, man, this is a good kid. And he just right. tried to do something that was just stupid at the time. I don't know why he did it. He don't know why he did it. It just happened. And what happens now is you go from there and you got to hear the ridicule jokes and create your character again. Right. And it's, it's okay because once you get the winner and he make the Lakers or whatever and, and, and being very successful in basketball, guess what? They slowly forget about this. But right. I tell you who can't forget about it is the person who did it, Jail. Jello was already in jail in his mind right? on the fact that he did it and couldn't take it back. So he don't need no more punishment. Mm-hmm. When people say, oh, he didn't go to jail, oh, he don't need to play no more basketball. He don't, nah, he know he shouldn't have never did that, and he did it anyway. But I'm not going to be the one to be like, man, that was the stupidest move. Well, we already know that. So I right. shouldn't jump on him being the only thing left, which was good for him. I didn't even go say it was good for him. But he can always tell his brothers and them, say, man, if you ever get locked up, mm-hmm. you don't want that because they have you sitting with a cuff. They don't care that you're uncomfortable. They don't care that you ain't ate, you ain't slept, and that you sit up the whole time. Right. And sometimes you say, you know what? I told my son, that's the last thing you ought to do bad is to keep you right for the, for a long time. Right. And there, right. there, there goes, I don't know if you've seen one of our shows, but Jello ain't got tattoos. I'm not a tattoo yes. guy. Right. Okay. And, and lots of people were talking about that on social media. Oh, see, I don't know why. Mm-hmm. You got tattoos. I don't like tattoos. So I'm saying somebody somebody got more influence on you than I have. Because right. you know how I am about none of my guys wear tattoos. Now all of a sudden, you mm-hmm. got tattoos all over your body. Mm-hmm. But I told him something must be bothering him because you have everything. And then that's why I had him give me the breakdown on why would you tat your body up like that. Right. And he... I guess it's a way for him to cope with things with people saying, oh, you're the only one of the ball brothers that's not going to make the NBA. Oh, you're not this. Oh, you're not that. I guess he looks at that all on his chest or whatever. And right. the fact that I told him not to do it, and he went and did it anyway, because he has a different meaning for it. But I'm right. not going to be, he's still my son. So I can't be like, you know what? I ain't going to ever, ever, ever talk to you again, man. Because right. the fact you got tattoos that I said don't get them. So I have to find something good in that. And that's one of the things he know that made me mad. But how can he perform over here in Lithuania if that's on his mind? Right. So right. therefore, I have to take my the way I believe things are done and, and, and go against that and be like, you know what? 
I forgive my boy. I let him do what he wants, just like people saying, be your own man. He's his own man because he didn't care about what I was saying, but he knew I was going to be mad, but that's something he wanted to do, and he did it. How could I stop him? Right. That's what I'm saying. People can do whatever the hell they want to do. You just got to suffer the consequences. And he already said, my dad's going to be mad. He already mm-hmm. knew that. That's why he covered it up for so long, but he, that's a chance he's willing to take. Right. right. And that's what I told him about the, uh, the situation in China. I said, now you get to think of things, and then you weigh your options, which is, do I do this wrong and go against my family? Mm-hmm. If, if you don't want to be dealing with your family no more, go ahead and do something wrong. It's okay. But don't think right. you can run back and be like, hey, which is better, you doing something stupid or being with your family? And so now he's going to do that every time he think about something now. Mm-hmm. Just like I told him. I told him this. The tattoos? Okay, you get them when you're young. Well, let's say my son has a family. And he has a young kid. He don't want no tattoos on it. His son possibly going to get a tattoo at 13, 14 years old. It's just a possibility. On the fact right. that, what is he going to say? Dad, you got him. Right, he's going to say, you have him, right. And he probably wants to be exactly. like his dad, right? I don't smoke a drink, so guess what? My boys ain't going to smoke a drink. And you know why I don't smoke a drink? Because my dad doesn't smoke a drink and my mom doesn't smoke a drink. Mm-hmm. So right. let's say if, if, if I'm fat, guess what? My kids are going to be fat. They're not going to be in shape because I'm not going to worry about being in shape. My dad's in great shape. That's the reason all my brothers and us, we big and in good shape. So guess what? When my boys come out, they're going to lift weights and be in great shape. Because it's all set from a precedent. But I told Jello, you know what? To deal with all this stuff, the stuff, it has meaning. And I always thought guys who got tattoos or the guys that's on the block who want to tell a story. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is my homie. He died. This is my dude who did this. I, I came from this street right here. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Son, I don't know what story you're going to tell because you haven't been on the streets. But then when he explained everything, like he had prevailed on the side, the word saying, you know what, I'm going to prove all these people wrong, that I'm good enough to make the NBA and be better than Lonzo. Mm-hmm. And then he had the other thing where he had his, one of his buddies that died. He had the Triple B brand, and he also had the lion. The lion is representative of him. But mm-hmm. being in jail, he said, that's when I got that lion. Like, I'm a lion. I was caged at first. Now I'm out. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So it had a lot of meaning, which I always thought it had to had the gangbanging meaning and stuff like that. But it had a lot of meaning to him, which now right. i got to step aside and realize that that's the thing these days. These guys get tattoos, and I'm telling them, never be a follower. Right. Be a leader. But, right. you know, none of his brothers that got it. And uh, now Alonzo has two tattoos on his on his wrist, mm-hmm. little bitty ones. But I always look at Mello and I say, Mello, you going to get a tattoo? He said, no, Dad, I'm the only one like you. <laughs> That's how he's going to rub it in on him. Like, man, I just right, he's making tattoo. sure you know, right? Like, like, <laughs> so he's going to be like that. I said, man, but it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's, it's fun to watch the boys grow, but like I said, a lot of people are stuck on that thing saying, oh, they're not grown men. No, they make great decisions. They've been grown men since they've been youngsters because I trust them, and they're very responsible. It's just sometimes you get off the road, and i got to push you back on there a little bit, but then I'll take care of you. Right, right. And it's so good just honestly hearing you just say these stories about your sons, and it's so good to hear you so involved because, honestly, I think we both know, LeVar, that unfortunately African-American males sometimes don't always get the best rep um, as far as being family figures. And, you know, I hate that oh, all yeah, the time. Oh, yeah, we definitely know that. And right. that's, why, that's why they're a little mad because usually when you have somebody with, with the talent of my boys, they're coming from a lower income neighborhood. Mm-hmm. You don't usually get no guys like this unless unless you got somebody like me to push them. Coming from middle class and you have everything, your own room, your own nest, shoot machines, BMWs. What's what's to drive you if you got all that already? Right. Unless you have it within yourself, not to just make it, but be the my boys want to be the best players in the world. They want to be the best right. players in the world. They not just say Oh, Lonzo made it to the NBA. We got money coming to us now. Let's go. That ain't got nothing to do with it. Like I told my boys from day one, if you're playing this game for the money, you already lost. Right. you got to play it to be the best in the world and right. chase it for as long as you can and see what it turns out to be. But if you don't have no goals to do that, you're not going to be as good as you think you are. Right. Because you're going to get burnt out and things are going to get a little hectic. It's just like, I want all my boys to be on the Lakers. Like I said, people saying that, that's too much for somebody to say something like that, let alone one person on the Lakers. But why wouldn't I try to get all three of my boys 
They play best together. Right. Therefore, right. they can all grow together. It would ease Lonzo's mind, Jello's mind, and Melo's mind. Imagine all three of them living in the same house, going to the same game, eating the same. How do you think the game chemistry would be so good? That's why right. when teams get together, they try to get in these little clicks so they can have some cohesiveness and chemistry. Right. Our boys is already built in. They've been doing it for life. You know how easy it would be to pass and shoot and know where somebody's going to be every time on the court. When, the last time my three boys got together mm-hmm. was in high school. They were 35 and 0. They was perfect. Couldn't nobody beat us, and I told them that before we even started mm-hmm. the season. Wow. That's, that's big volumes, obviously. Yeah. But like you said, that chemistry the that boys they have are good together. For Who wouldn't want to go watch the Lakers play with all three of the ball boys on the same pitch? Reunite. Mm-hmm. And then let's be honest, it'd be good for you too, right? I said, and then it'd be great for you too, right? To just go to one arena and watch all your sons play. Thank you. And here's, you don't have to do all that traveling. I don't want to have to do all that traveling, bouncing here and here. <laughs> but here's the main thing I want to build. When I say they win championship after championship, mm-hmm. which I'm trying to let them understand that. You never have to pay my boys top dollar, and they're going to be like, man, if I don't get $50 million, I'm scoring the most points, I'm leaving. They'll stay together for their whole career, and trust me, they'll figure it out how to win championships. I don't want to be on three different teams and one of them win a championship every other year. So one of them wins, and the other two be like, man, our teams suck. So it's only one of them having gratification. Just like with this big baller brand, it's, it's fun to look to the side and have my family there and pull them along up with, with us. Right. So it's a, it's, a great, it's a great feeling. You don't want to be at the top by yourself. Who are you going to enjoy it with? Right. I'm going to tell you what, I'm having the best time of my life right now just on the success of my boys. And like I said, I'm not done with this until all my boys get on the same team. Then, I, then I'll be able to sit back and rest, and you guys can interview me after five or ten years. What are you doing now, LeBron? Drinking a gallon of milk and eating 12 donuts. <laughs> That sounds luxurious, I have to tell you. <laughs> Do that. But 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 until then, like I said, I'm gonna keep building this brand and keep building the things that we have that they're gonna look back and say, Wow, the guy who made a change was a father who had three sons. Not even right. being a, a, a superstar or nothing like that. But I'm bigger than all these guys now on the fact that they don't have their own brand. Right. They're not gonna be as big as I am and be able to do this. I want to try to make my boys the first billionaires to be on the court. Mm. For the little chump change they get in two hundred and fifty million or three hundred million for however many years they play, that's nothing compared to what they already make. Right. Right. I mean as I mean so, and nobody can ever say that you don't want the best for your boys because you're sitting here saying it. I mean you genuinely you exactly. genuinely want them to be the best versions of themselves, be successful, but really overall just be happy, right, in what they're doing. Exactly. And that's what I hear you saying. <laughs> You want to be happy. Like I said, uh, I prefer all my boys to play for the Lakers, but like I told them, any team that will take all three of my boys, that's that's what their ultimate goal is. They can be anywhere. As long as they together, mm-hmm. it's like it would be so fun to play your whole career with your brothers. Right. And just keep winning and winning. Because I'll tell you what, in five years, everybody's going to be on their way out. What I mean by that is KD will be getting older. Steph Curry will be older. LeBron will be older. Uh, Harden will be older. Guess who the youngsters going to be? Five years go by, and Lonzo going to be what? 24? Mm-hmm. Jello going to be 21? Jello 23? Right. Now they're all in the same team. We're about to take over for the next 10 years. Right. The opportunity will be there. You know, They'll, the it will be there. Be there. Like mm-hmm. I said, the, the, the biggest, and they think I'm bragging on this right now, the, 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 one of the baddest people in the NBA right now, they got everything going for them. Probably the biggest person in the NBA. It ain't it ain't LeBron James and, and, and Kyrie Irving and them. They're on their way out. Everybody understands that. The biggest person in the NBA right now, and I'm gonna tell you who it is, is okay. Lonzo Ball. Stack stack up with him and see if they can. First of all, nobody has their own brand like Lonzo. Lonzo just don't have. Uh, he got his own clothing line with the ZO2 collection. Nobody right. has that. Nobody is has their own water company. Let's see who else. Can anybody else dance and, and sing on stage as a performer? He's a rapper. Mm-hmm. Right. So right. And his video got a lot of good reviews. Who, who's stacking up 
to this guy like there's nobody. LeBron can't rap. He ain't got his own brand. He's under Nike. Mm-hmm. He ain't got his own water. Rims to, I mean, he don't have his stuff like this. And that's why people think I'm bragging to my son. It's just, nah, he in the game differently. My boy's in the game differently. It's just like when I took him out of school, people are saying, well, what about their education? No, they're already educated. You can't jump out of school if you don't have nothing behind it. So you've got to look at us differently on the fact that we are a family with a brand. If you don't have a brand, you can't do that. Right. If you have right. a brand, I can get my boys on the job training. So don't be like, oh, where's he going to get his GED? He's never going to get a GED for what? You see what I'm saying? But people are stuck on that, thinking it's politically correct, saying, oh, my boys are already in charge. Right. They already understand. They understand what they want to do. So it's not like them, hey, having something to fall back on. Right. We don't like to fall back. We like to go forward. Mm, what a do something that ahead of you. Like yeah, I'm not falling back on nothing. That means you're satisfying for something behind you. Right. That's like going right. after a pretty-ass girl, and you say you can't get her, and you marry this ugly bride. And man, but she's the only one left. <laughs> At least I have a wife. Ah, oh, you don't want that. How's she gonna feel? Mm-hmm. You want that mm-hmm. person, the one whoever you get with, to be like, I'm that one he picked, and that's good. I'd rather do that. Right. But that's what right. I'm saying. Go into whatever you want to do with a with a stronghold and and make it happen. Right. Mm-hmm. And don't don't settle for nothing. Sometimes you have to go a little bit beyond, but it, it's it's going to happen. I never told my boys. You know what? If you lift these weights and practice basketball, you got to make a lot of money doing this. Right. The thing right. I led them with is, if 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 you want to do this, you have a better chance of winning the lottery than being an NBA pro player. But the mindset that I told them since day one: somebody got to be better than Jordan. Why not you? Right. You already got to jump on it. On I'm the father, and I'm training you every day. His daddy wasn't training him like that. Right. So you take advantage of all the stuff that you have, and you just go as hard as you can. He's got a better start than Jordan had already on the fact that Lonzo's 20. One and done. He got stuff that that, that Jordan didn't never have for a while and don't have. Jordan doesn't have his own brand. That Michael Jordan brand, Nike let him have that. Mm -hmm. So as long as he makes money with that Jordan, make sure you break off a little money to Nike for them allowing you to do that. And to show you that you don't have complete control is when they had the Olympics and he had the Jordan shoe. He had the Jordan shoe, but they had the Nike sign in the middle and his brand on the back of the heel. Mm. You're never going to find those two brands on on my shoe. Them triple B's is mine. And if I get mad, I can leave with them. Mm. LeBron, Kobe, whoever, when when Nike finished with them, you're not taking that stuff with them. That's theirs. The mama sign. The, the lion sign, all that stuff, LBS, that's, the, that's Nike stuff. It's just like, right. here's the thing. Who's been one of the baddest dudes in the game? Kobe Bryant. What's he doing now? Nike's finished with you. Mm-hmm. So you're not really having out. No, Kobe's coming out. Now, if you had your own brand, guess what? You had the mama sign all over the place. Mm-hmm. You can't mm-hmm. do that. Nike's done with you. Now we got to deal with Kyrie and the next Nike guys are coming up. Hopefully it's Ben Simmons and uh LeBron's on his way out, but they gave him a lifetime deal. They didn't tell everybody he has to be 80 80 years old before he gets that billion dollars. They don't tell you all that. And it's like, man, you made them 16, 17 billion in a year. They can't just give you one for nothing. You're the one running and jumping and doing all this. But I don't want nothing for no lifetime because if he comes out with a great idea, he can't use it because Nike says, "Uh uh-uh. Right, they Conflict own it. We own it, buddy. Right. Well, you can't come out with nothing. That's why he could never promote his own shoe. He can't be like, hey, you know what? Go out and get your merch. Get this. My boys can say whatever they want. Go get these VO2. They're the best. Anytime mm-hmm. they want. Mm-hmm. And it's just like what, what they don't understand. We don't even find uh, like basketballs and jerseys right. on the fact that I don't want my son's autograph watered down. When you sign all these, that's why we didn't sign a deal with some of these car companies and say, you know what, we'll give you $2 million to, to sign 12,000 items. Right. Now this right. just watered down. So my boy signed something that's genuine. If you want something that's real, like a basketball or something like that, you've got to go to bigballerbrandmemorabilia.com. There you go. Because if we don't sign it, it's not, it's not authentic. Mm. 
that's that's the part of the game they never knew. It's just like when Lonzo uh, had his VO2 wet, and we charged people a thousand dollars for the mm-hmm. shoe on the fact that it's symbolic. Forget about the thousand; it's an investment. Let's right. say Lonzo wins a couple of championships and uh, you know MVP a few times. How much you think that shoe is worth now? The fact that he signed it, the shoes that Nike and uh, have for Kobe and them is stamped on there. Right. It's not the original signature. You got Lonzo's original signature on there his first year. Right. So that's that's very strong to have that that shoe. When people say, Oh, can I invest in big baller brand? I say, Yeah, buy these shoes for a thousand, wait four or five years, they'd be worth twenty five thousand. Mm-hmm. So you can do what you want to do, but right. like I said, when you water it down, they gotta be stamped on the shoe and it's not worth anything. So LeBron right. and them is you get mellow or jello signature or mellow I mean, those, it's going to be worth something on the fact that it's not watered down when we sign it against ourselves. Right. Wow. Uh, LeVar, it's been such a pleasure to have you on talking everything. Hey, it's been a pleasure. I know we've been talking for a long time. No, this is good. I'm telling you. This is great. (laughs) Hey, good to hear. It's good to hear. But sometimes it's it's good to have uh, people with some knowledge or have their head screwed on, right, and to talk to them in a – specific way like this. It's just like a regular conversation. I usually Great. don't talk to people this long because they get stupid before this. <laughs> well, I so have now to you got thank me. you again. Yes. But see, <laughs> I, nice, intelligent conversation. This is mm-hmm. easy. But when you want me to say something and I know how things are, that's when you get your CNN and your other stuff telling people to stay in their lane because they get crazy and start asking me dumb stuff. Right. But to have right. a conversation, understand where I'm coming from, and you understand what I'm doing, you have to go in it with, with, a, with a good vision instead of preconcerted notion on I just saw him on YouTube or looking at him get mad or do something like that. Right, right. Unfortunately, you, know, right, you just care about clicks. Yeah, thank you. See, you would have said it. I didn't say it. You said it because you know what's I going did. on. I mean, it's true. I'm an honest person. I can only be myself. It's true. Some media people, you know, <laughs> they care more about clicks. But, I mean, that's why I started my show. What I really say, want quality content. You said content. the most important thing. And you know what? You just said something that, that made me think of my wife. Mm-hmm. You said you only could be you. You only could be yourself. Right. And that's so true. And right. she used to always say this. I can only be myself because everybody else is taken. It's true. It's true. You know. And people are going to love or hate you regardless, as you said in this interview. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Yes. Wow. You are, LeVar, like I said, thank you again so much, especially from taking time out overseas. I wish the best of your luck. Best of luck to your sons in the upcoming BBB London Lion Clash game. I know the big baller brand will be there representing. You have your pop-up shop there. Make sure you get tickets online. LeVar said it earlier. You can get tickets. Go to Big Baller Brand. Check out their website or as well as Ticketmaster, I see. Also has tickets as well for that. It's going to be a good one. It is going to be a blast, LeVar. Thank you again so much. Thank you very much, and you take care of yourself and have a great day. Thanks, you too. All right, that's a wrap for this edition of Listen In with KNN. I hope you had fun, learned something, and of course jumped in on the KNN bandwagon. Be sure to listen in each and every week for new shows that drop online at foxsports1340am.com and kelseynicolenelson.com. If that's not enough, the show is available for download on iTunes and Google Play. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review. Your feedback and support matter. Until next week, enjoy the sports world, smile, and don't take your fantasy sports too seriously because there's always another play. Advertisement and sponsorship opportunities are now available for Listen In with KNN on AM 1340 and 96.9 FM, Fox Sports Radio, WHAP. Become a part of the hottest new sports talk show in the nation's capital, fueled by one of the largest national sports radio networks. Hosted by award-winning sports personality Kelsey Nicole Nelson, Listen In with KNN brings listeners the latest trending topics in sports and in entertainment each week. So if you're looking to maximize your brand's exposure alongside the best local and national sports coverage, plus special live editions of Listen In with KNN from venues around the region, email Kelsey at Kelsey Nelson at foxsports1340am.com. For more information about Listen In with KNN, visit foxsports1340am.com.
Follow Kelsey on Twitter at the real K Nelson. You've been listening to Listen In with K N N on AM 1340 and 96.9 FM Fox Sports Radio.